I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to Niagara Pro Tips. Today we're going to be focusing on data validity and integrity, trying to make sure that the data that we're collecting is as accurate and reliable as we can on the back end side. Uh, obviously, we have some tools in series transforms, for example, uh, with cleanser nodes and also with analytics with uh, outliers where we can detect certain anomalies and then potentially clean up the data on the visualization side uh, for the chart or the table or for some analytic algorithm uh, to try to clean up some uh, anomaly values that we might have in the data sets. So I want to focus on not only history collection, but also on real-time data and control logic and how some of these unreliable values might impact your control logic as well. And to demonstrate this, I just have a, a few control points here that are simulation points and uh, a program object using as well so I can introduce some faults. And the idea here would be these might be smart meter points that are totalized energy. So it could be gas, water, uh, steam, electricity, uh, but some kind of a, a data value that's being totalized in a, in a meter or some kind of external device that we're talking to. And we don't really expect those values to decrease. They should just constantly increase uh, some ever-increasing value. And when we want to aggregate those values together, what I see some customers use are just standard ad blocks from kit control. And there's you know some potential impact here with invalid statuses and values that you need to be aware of. So we can see that currently uh, the three numbers being added together uh, sum up to 230. Now, let me introduce a fault here. And uh, for the first fault, I'm just going to in, uh, cause it to have a fault status, actually, on the output here. Uh, so the, we're still reading a value, but it has a fault status, something maybe with the driver had a polling exception or something of that nature. You'll notice with the ad block that the output here goes to 150. So it, the ad block by uh, will disregard that invalid status of a fault status there. Using an expression block from kit control, you'll notice that the output is still at 230. So the expression math block is not actually excluding that uh, fault status. And this is also a, a third type of component, which comes from the Vicom Pro module. It's an aggregate consumption block. And it's designed when it has an invalid input on the, uh, the status uh, that it maintains the last known good value in the calculation. So the output of the calculation is still 230. So expression math and aggregate may be a little bit better about handling that fault status. Uh, there's other statuses as well, though. Uh, so for example, um, if I have a, a null status, that can also impact your control logic. So with a, a null status on the input of the ad block, it also ignores that input and the output goes to 150. The expression math, uh, unfortunately, treats that null status uh, on the input as not a number, NAN, uh, which results in an NAN output value on the calculation as well. And the aggregate consumption block, again, uh, handles the case where you have a null status and it just uses that last known value. So we don't see a drop in our totalized uh, consumption value, which we, we don't want to see because that would introduce an anomaly in our analytics or possibly in, in our control logic as well. Uh, now, an, another thing to keep in mind here is uh, if we do have a, a fault status, for example, uh, how do we know uh, that's there and is it impacting uh, things downstream? Uh, and we can see, looking at the uh, property sheet of the ad block, there's uh, propagate flags. And by default, uh, none of these statuses are checked. But if I do check any of these statuses, like disabled, fault, down, and so forth, then if there's any of those statuses on the input slots, that's also reflected in the output slot. So that's giving me at least some downstream indication that maybe I'm having some data integrity or data validity issues on the inputs into my control logic. Or if I'm recording a history on this aggregated value, then it also gives me some indication that the underlying uh, source data sets might have some unreliable data condition in them. And <clears throat> the aggregate consumption block uh, also has a propagate flags property on it as well. So we can certainly propagate those input 
uh, statuses to give us some indication of, of that reliability. Although in this case, we're holding on to the last known valid value. So maybe that propagating flags is not as important with the aggregate consumption block. So let me clear the fault. Now, some other things uh, could be invalid values as well, which could impact your control logic and, and or your history collection. So let's say, for example, uh, that I set this value to NAN on this meter one simulation point. You'll see the ad block <clears throat> sees that NAN value on the input, which ultimately results in an NAN value on the output. And the same thing happens with the expression block. But the aggregate consumption block in this case ignores that invalid value input of NAN and just uses the last known value. So again, we maintain a, a better uh, total there. Uh, now, I'll set it back to 75. We can see everything goes back to 230. Now, uh, we can introduce another invalid value here, maybe like positive INF, positive infinity, or negative infinity. And again, what we'll see is on the ad block, that invalid value on the input causes the output to go to a positive infinity as well. And the expression math block does the same thing as well. Whereas this aggregate consumption block handles the, the last known value. So these are all things to consider as far as invalid statuses like stale, uh, disabled, fault, or down, which could impact the downstream control logic uh, and, and cause those inputs to be ignored, or invalid values like perhaps NAN or positive or negative infinity. You really need to consider this in your control logic and your history collection, particularly when you're aggregating values like this where we would expect the numbers to, to be maintained. Let's talk about uh, some other scenarios uh, on the data integrity and validity as well. In this case, I have uh, two BACnet proxy points here uh, under a, a BACnet device sort of simulating a, a smart meter. And these are totalized values that are increasing. And same sort of scenario of them being linked into ad blocks uh, or expression math or aggregate consumption as far as these having invalid statuses or invalid values. Um, one thing that uh, all control points have by default is if we take a look at the uh, at the slot sheet on uh, one of these energy points here, the out slot has the RTSO flags. That's the read-only, transient, summary, and operator. So the T flag is the transient flag, and that means that value is never saved to the BOG file. When the station restarts, that value is initialized at a default, which in this case would be a zero value. And then once the driver communicates, uh, we get a reading, then we update the actual um, read value property on the proxy extension, which then flows to the out slot on the control point. So looking at the uh, slot sheet on the uh, proxy extension, you'll see the read value here also has the transient flag on it. Now, that, that is a pretty typical and probably desirable behavior for a driver network. So we don't know how long the station's been shut down. Uh, we don't know uh, how long that device might have been offline and things of that nature. So when the station starts up, it initializes at a default value. Once we get an actual reading from the driver, everything gets populated into the control points. To, to show you how this might impact things, what I'll do is I'll change the device um, ID here on my BACnet device to um, something that's not uh, not valid for that uh, device. So it's going to cause the device to go down here, get down an alarm, and those points are going to go into a, a fault status as well as of down. So again, uh, we realize that the ad block in this case has no output because there's no valid input. Um, the expression math block doesn't discount those um, down statuses, so it still has the same number and the aggregate consumption block does as well. So where this can particularly be a, a problem is if um, I'm gonna restart the station. So while the, while the BACnet device is down, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and restart my station here. And we'll do a little time lapse so you don't have to watch the application director the whole time. Okay, the station's back in a running status now, so let me just go ahead and, and refresh the tabs that I had open there. And now if I take a look at this uh, point wire sheet again, you'll see that uh, this energy one point has a, a value of zero, 
whereas the uh, energy point has retained the last known value that we read from the device before the device went down. So this is an important uh, type of concept when you're dealing with totalized values, uh, particularly when the controller, those values are persisted. So like a, a power cycle on that controller is not going to reset that accumulated total. And we know we want to hold on to that last known value. And the difference here is looking at this um, energy point here at the out slot. What I've done is cleared the transient flag. And if I take a look at the uh, proxy extension uh, for the, the read value here as well, if I take a look at the slot sheet, uh, we'll see that now it just has the read only flag. I've cleared the transient flag. So to do that, um, there's probably a, a number of ways that you go about doing it. Uh, but in my case, I have a, a program object here. And this program object is designed to submit a, a BQL query for numeric points in the name that you know meet a certain criteria. And there's a, a slot name here. So there's an action uh, on this program object to update the transient flag. And if I uh, submit a Boolean false, then that says remove the flag. If I submit a true, then that says to um, set the flag, to add the flag. So just running that program object, I can go through and for those particular points, which are persistent in those devices, um, where I don't want to initialize a default value on, on station restart, uh, then we can clear that transient flag. So this is the energy one proxy extension and you can see the transient flag is cleared from the, the read value slot. And if I look at the um, um, prog or the uh, property sheet of the energy one point and look at the slot sheet uh, here, again, the transient flag is cleared. So those values will be saved persistently to the bog file. When the station restarts, it'll load the last known value. And that's uh, a, a good, uh, good process. Uh, to use with control points that are totalized and are persistent in the field device so that we can maintain the last known value, which can help with our control logic as far as aggregating values together and things of that nature or some other kind of control logic that we're using. And this will help improve uh, the validity and integrity of the data that we're using either for the control logic and or for um, histories uh, that we're collecting so that we can do uh, um, value comparisons or analytics and things of that nature. So trying to uh, maximize the, the garbage in equals garbage out kind of thing of having more valid um, and reliable data that's being collected in the station and in the histories. So stay tuned for our next part. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this part at least and stay tuned for our next part on uh, more about history collection, uh, some things to consider uh, with large values and uh, meter rollovers and things of that nature.